Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our November 5th, 2023 service for First Congregational United Church of Christ in Zimbabwe. It is Communion Sunday. Today, uh, does anyone have any announcements they'd like to make? My announcements are these. Uh, firstly, I would like to uh, talk about the upcoming schedule. Next week, we will have the baptism of Charlotte Main Fort, and the United Redeemer Handbell Choir is going to be playing for the first half of the service. There is going to be a concert here from the uh, United Redeemer Handbell Choir and the baptism. And after the baptism, there's going to be a meal at the, the, at the fire hall. And that's going to start 11, something like that, I believe. So next Sunday, when you are here, after the service, there will be, the forts are um, presenting an after service meal at the fire hall. The following Sunday, the 19th, there will be our Thanksgiving service and a congregational meeting after the service on the 19th, congregational meeting, and there will be a potluck after that. So the 19th has the congregational meeting and the potluck, and then the following week will be the 26th, and I haven't worked that far ahead as to what the agenda is going to be for that Sunday. The following Sunday is going to be the first week of Advent. And so we will be lighting the Advent candle. And I think it is, uh, let me see, the 24th is a Sunday. So the 17th will be a Sunday. Uh, the 10th will be a Sunday. The 3rd will be a Sunday. So those will be the four weeks of Advent. We will need reader or candle lighters for the four weeks of Advent. And then on Christmas Eve, the Christmas Eve service, which will be Sunday night, that service we will need readers. So if you or anyone in your family would like to do that, we will have openings all four Sundays of Advent. And then we will have three to four openings on Christmas Eve. And there will not be a there will not be a morning service on Sunday the 24th because we will be having service at five o'clock on Christmas Eve. And then the following Sunday the 31st, we will have our regular service and that will be the last service that we will have in this church. Would you please rise and body your spirit and bow your heads as I give the prayer of invocation this morning. God, teach us to have faith. Give us faith in you and faith in our neighbors. Don't let us give up. Don't let us be pessimistic. Don't let us believe the worst in ourselves or others. Give us the strength to have hope when the world seems hopeless. Give us confidence that things will be well at the end. Amen. Our first hymn.
will be hymn 299 for all the saints. And this morning we will be singing the first verse only of all of the hymns. First verse only. First, first hymn 299 for all the saints. Please bow your heads. Jesus, we gather at your table to join you in the breaking of this bread. As we live our lives, please make us make it known to us that our sins are forgiven. Please make it known to us that we can go forward remembering the things that we've done but knowing in our hearts that we're forgiven. Teach us to forgive ourselves and then teach us to forgive our neighbors when they do things that they would later regret. Teach us from our mistakes and let us go forward in our lives, being a blessing to ourselves and a blessing to others. Amen. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven.
in the Gospels. We read about the Last Supper. When Jesus and his disciples shared bread and wine, symbols of community and love and sacrifice and togetherness. The bread is a symbol of us joining with Jesus. And the wine is a symbol of being willing to sacrifice. And before we take communion, I'd like to talk about it in kind of a new way. One of the things that I admire the most about Jesus was his vision. And I've talked about vision a few times in the past. What I mean by that is this. Jesus had the ability to see others. Maybe some people that others, society might have neglected or might have forgotten. Or people who society didn't see. Today, in our world, there are plenty of people that we don't see. And more than that, people nowadays seem to want to keep to themselves. They're isolated. They don't join in the same way. And there's loneliness. This communion is an opportunity for us to be with Jesus, to be one with Jesus, and hopefully to learn from Jesus about how to see others and how to bring others with us in our neighborhoods, our town, our world. As you take the sacraments this morning, think about that. Think about Jesus' vision and how you can improve your vision as you go forward in your lives. On the night before his arrest, Jesus gave thanks to God and broke bread and gave it to the disciples saying, take, eat this. This is my body. Be one. Be one with me. The wine is a symbol of being willing to sacrifice for others, for seeing others and recognizing the value in them and being willing to lay down your life for them. And Jesus said to his disciples, take this, this cup, This blood is the covenant that I shed for you. Please bow your heads. Holy Spirit, please consecrate this cup and this bread so that as we receive them, we may be united with God with Jesus and with our Holy Spirit. Through the breaking of the bread and eating, we are joining with Jesus. Eat when you receive the bread, as we are all individuals.
Through the cup of blessing, we participate in a new life with Christ. A life in which we, com we commit to sacrifice to help others. Let us drink together at one time as a community. Please bow your heads for the prayer of thanksgiving. Thank you, God, for inviting us to this table where we have known the presence of Christ. Strengthen our faith, our gratitude, and our love for our neighbor. Amen. Communion benediction. Here Jesus promised, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Amen. Let's take some time now for silence and for reflection and creating space inside us where we can meet with God.
Open your eyes when you're ready. And take a deep breath in. And send a deep breath out. For All Saints Day, this Sunday, our readings focus on death and resurrection and what that might mean. Our first reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 32 and then 38 to 44, on page 874. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother Lazarus would not have died. Then Jesus, again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said, out, said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in the cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Our second reading is way back in Exodus on page 44. Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Moses at the burning book. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. <coughs> he led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then God said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Our final reading today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verses 24 to 27, on page 825. And 
this is the same story that we read in Matthew and in Mark, where the Sadducees are calling, are questioning Jesus about the resurrection. Jesus said to them, Is not this the reason you are wrong? That you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the story about the bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is God not of the dead, but of the living. You were quite wrong. This ends the reading. On All Saints Day, it's a nice time to think about those who have been with us in our lives, who have helped to shape us in our lives and mold us and improve us and teach us and make us the people we are today. And some of them are still with us, helping us, and some of them are no longer with us these saints in our lives. It's pleasant to, reckon, to recall them, and it's pleasant to hear the stories of them and how they shaped us. And it's pleasant to think that although they are no longer with us and we can no longer touch them or see them or hear them, we can't be with them face to face. But they are somewhere. They are somewhere safe. And they are somewhere where they are loved. And they are somewhere where they are at peace. And whole. And comfortable. And we will see them again. And we will be with them again in some way. Somewhere. That is Jesus' promise, and that is the promise of the Scriptures. I have asked for you to bring a photograph or photographs of some loved ones who are no longer with us so that we could learn about them and reminisce and see their faces again. Would someone like to show a photograph and talk about the person?
I couldn't find a photograph of these two ladies, but um, my grandma Alma had two sisters, Josephine and Agnes, and they were both, to me, I was a little girl, they were much, you know, obviously my grandmother's age, and my grandmother had my mother in her late 40s, so these were women in their 80s when I was a little girl. And uh, they were just remarkable to me. Both of them lost their husbands very young and when they had two small children. And uh, the one did just every kind, moved to Minneapolis, did every kind of job you can imagine to raise her kids and never remarried. And the other one um, put the kids in the car and drove to Alaska and started a business up there. And, and actually when J.D. and I passed through, we saw um, her grandkids, who are my, I guess, second cousins. But... I'm just um, always in awe of those two. They were my favorite growing up. They were just really, you know, tough, can-do kind of Norwegian ladies that just um, made their life through very difficult times and a great senses of humor, and I felt loved, you know, so much by them. So I'm just remembering Josephine and Agnes today. <laughs> Did anyone else bring some photographs? Yes. Yeah, I, I brought a photograph of my uh, dad's family. Uh, there were four or seven siblings, and uh, my dad was the oldest. They're all gone now, and uh, and also my dad and my, my mother. But uh, my dad's family was just a hardworking group. Uh, Farmers primarily, but uh, not real spiritual, but they were very uh, kind and giving, and uh, uh, if something needed to be fixed, they'd figure out how to do it and did it, and uh, they taught me quite a bit over the years, and I appreciate the fact that they were there when I was young. Could we see the photograph, Bob? It's, uh, it's pretty small. There's seven of them, and uh, I don't know why my dad's the shortest. <laughs> <laughs> I have a photograph that I will pass along, and it is uh, taken in, I think, 1981 or 1982, and uh, my mother is seated on a chair, and my brother and I are my brother Woody and I are making little devil horns behind her. And what I um, think about this photograph is about my mother, um, that she was like the perfect straight woman because she was a very trusting person and she lived her life as if nobody was going to do anything bad to her. And so she was open to everyone. And she lived her life with that belief system that nobody was going to do anything wrong to her. And that's perhaps because that was her mindset nobody ever did. And my brother Woody, who was in the white t-shirt, uh, what I learned from him is the importance of forgiving yourself when you make a mistake and the importance of loving yourself. Because if you don't do that, there's very limited way forward for you. Is there anyone else that would like to talk about somebody? Somebody in their life that touched them. Yes. I'll just say a few words about uh, a couple of people who took a chance on me. Uh, I was a tall, skinny kid, not very good in high school. 
played more interested in playing basketball, baseball, football, and kind of things like that. And um, I really had no idea what was going on in college or doing anything. My dad came to me when I was 18 in the summer of, after I graduated from high school. I always thought I was going to take over the business for him because I had worked there all those high school years. But uh, he told me, he said, I think you better go down and sign up for college. And I had never thought about that. So I went down, and in those days, of course, there was no application or anything. You just went down and went to the registrar's office and said, I'd like to sign up for school. Mm. And Thank you for the people in our lives, the saints who have come before us and who might not be with us now, but who are with us in our lives and who show us a way forward and a way in which we could go in a way in which we could grow in a way in which we could be the people that we are let us never forget that and let us keep their names on our lips and in our memories so that when we feel low, we will have them. We will have them inside of us to teach us to go forward and be in the world in the right way. Amen.
Please turn to hymn 305. Three hundred and five, you servants of God, your sovereign proclaim. Are there any joys or concerns that anyone would like to add to the prayer requests this morning? Were there any online, Jenny? Uh, Mary Haas said it was a beautiful sermon. Well, I'll accept compliments. From a relative. Yeah, from a sister-in-law. <laughs> Would you please bow your hats as I give the prayers to the people? God, thank you for the people in our lives who have meant so much to us. Make us grateful for their presence and open to what they have to say to us, whether it comes from the past or whether it comes from our friends and neighbors right now. Thank you for the blessings that you have showered on us. And keep in our minds all that we have and all of the ways that we can be your people. We ask God for healing grace for Bill Budensek and Eric Hostiger, for our friends and neighbors who are living with stress and difficult times and anxiety and depression and hopelessness. God, give us the strength to be there when we can and to reach out to our neighbors and friends and check in with them and see how they're doing and how they're feeling. And to let them know that we're there that we care about them and love them and want to be with them. Please give your strength and healing for Sarah and Mel Miller 
and their loved ones as they live their new lives without some of their loved ones. And we ask for your traveling grace for Nanny and Virgo as they start their new lives in Taiwan. Please rise in body or spirit and let's pass the peace one to the other. Please be seated for the offering. Teach us that what is ours is really from you, and what is yours is really for us. Amen. Please turn to Hymn 438 for the first verse of When Peace Like a Hymn 438.
and be gracious unto you and give you peace. Go with God, knowing that all of the saints are still with you. Amen. Thank you.